Three, two, one, we are recording. Hello and welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am Dave Bamano, your host, and we are here to help entrepreneurs move forward. And we do that by introducing them to great, incredible leaders, entrepreneurs, people like the guest I have on the show today, who is from uh, Estonia, right? My first guest from Estonia. Pretty cool. His name is Miko Jara. Miko, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here, man. Yeah. Uh, and we're actually, I, I'm sending regards to you from a very beautiful island south of Estonia. Uh, and it's a kind of a great way to, to, to jump into the entrepreneurial uh, conversation and obstacles uh, that, that come along the way as we're staying in a cabin, beautiful cabin uh, in the middle of basically no man's land. We had a perfect Wi-Fi until today and then we started getting, it started getting a bit shaky. So I actually had to rent a rent very fast a conference space in the center of uh, this, the island. And I'm here actually at the Johan Spa Hotel meeting room. So that's, right. don't mind the funny mustard looking background here. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's making me want a pretzel. So, hey, uh, <laughs> no, well, th thanks for being flexible and making it happen today, even though you're on vacation with your family in the woods. Uh, you're an entrepreneur and you found a way to make it happen. So I appreciate that. You're a good man. So, uh, so I normally don't have guests from Estonia. And, uh, but we met through a mutual friend, Laura Marsala. Laura said, I needed to meet you. Uh, she, I, think, I, think, I think she felt we, we would be uh, kindred spirits and uh, very, very glad she introduced us. We, we've uh, had some communications uh, uh, since then. And I love your story. And whether you are uh, in Estonia or New York or wherever, your story is very relevant. And, and uh, it, it's one that I wanted to share with the Avanti family because you know, we all like right now, you look incredible, right? You have beautiful family, you're making money, you're traveling all over Europe. I mean, you like, you know, from a, uh, you know, picture perfect perspective, you know, you're looking great, right? But it wasn't always that way. And that's, that's what I really try to, um, you know, get out of the guests on my show is, yeah, things are great. And, and there's some good things going on. But tell me about uh, the, the crashed and almost burned story, because that's what's inspirational. You know, we all have those, especially beginning stage entrepreneurs, it, it could feel very lonely, right? Um, and, and you're thinking like, why God, why is everybody so successful besides me? And frankly, it's not the case, right? There's ups and downs everywhere in between. <clears throat> you know, some people call it the entrepreneurial roller coaster. And, uh, and you've got a great story. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we talked, it seemed like you know, it seemed like you were down and out. You like you were rocky, passed out in the ring, and you took one more deep breath and got back up again and fought your way back. So I want to hear the story. So Miko, tell us, tell us about uh, you know uh, what you were doing, uh, uh, you know, and then and then how how this this crashed and burned story almost happened, and and how did you rise uh, again, and, and what are you doing today to be successful, and, and allows you to live the life that, that you've really manifested for yourself and your family? Thank, thank you, David, for the int introduction, and uh, yes, it's, it's been quite a roller coaster. I think that uh, life really is a roller coaster when you start really thinking about it, um, and it's the ups and downs, you know, uh, what, what, what makes life worth living, actually. It's the as a, as a wise man once said that ad, the adversity is the ca canvas upon which you paint your greatness. Um, and it, of course, it surely didn't feel like that at the time when I was going through the biggest obstacles and struggles in my life about eight years ago. Well, let's actually rewind a little bit uh, all the way to the beginning real quick. So um, ju just a heads up, uh, I'm actually living in Estonia, but my, my, uh, I'm born in Finland, which is 80 kilometers north from here. Um, and I, my, my mom is from Finland. My dad is actually from born in Jerusalem. So I've got a bit of a mixed background. And uh, I spent 10 years in Dubai uh, as, a, as a young kid growing up to where I went to school. And I actually got the entrepreneur uh, kind of blood injected into me from combination of seeing my dad build businesses and also the, the, how, seeing the city of Dubai really grow exponential during from the 90s to, to, to what it has become today, right? or late 80s until today. And, um, and, but I, I never kind of fit it in, in, in school. I was kind of trying to find my place, trying to find my tribe, trying to find where I'm, what I'm good at, 
doing a lot of su- sports and subjects, but never really, I was, I was not an A student. I was a B and even a closer, closer to a C student. Um, and then when our parents got divorced, so at 1997, we moved back to Finland with my mom and my sisters. Um, and I, you know, moving from a quite a strict Muslim country to a very liberal, open-minded Finland, I, I kind of, you know, I was going through a bit of culture shock and I lost my way a bit. And uh, I, I started hanging out with the kind of, you know, wrong, wrong kind of tribe. And there was drugs involved and partying. And uh, I, I got cooked on computer games. I was escaping reality even further. I was playing a game called Counter-Strike throughout my high school and college, first year of college. Um, and really trying to find my way. And of course, I had that option. I knew um, when, when, when my uncle asked me at age five, what do you want to be when you grow up? I already said I want to be a businessman. That was kind of, you know, not clear. But somehow, how to get started. And, you know, my dad was putting maybe pressure that come continue his businesses. But I wanted to do it on my own. And um, they just couldn't find a, maybe the right uplifting environment to make that happen in. Um, and I was just about to drop out of college at age 21. And I was thinking very seriously to maybe go back to Dubai and start start doing business from there, uh, maybe with a you know bit, bit bit of support with my dad. But something was holding me back. And then I got a call from my friend, and at age 21, uh, he introduced me to uh, to an opportunity. It was actually a direct sales business. Um, and uh, so for some reason, I I just saw it. I just like I saw the potential of exponential growth. I saw that you know this could be something I could be successful in. And I found my passion, my negative addictions of partying and playing playing counter-strike actually turned into an addiction of growing and building my business um and obviously you know it it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows Uh, from the beginning we had some challenges with the first two companies we worked with um the third third and fourth companies that were that i worked with in the direct sales industry were mediocre successful or medium maybe a bit above medium success for me um and then at the age of maybe 25 i started making like you know a little bit over 10,000 euros a month uh, in commissions. And at, at that time, it was like, you know, it felt like, wow, I'm on top of the world. And um, I started then th- looking at investments and I had, you know, we had a great group of people behind, uh, together who we were working with, who were also all very entrepreneur driven. And we had big visions and dreams that let's, you know, after reading a lot of self-help books, uh, where all of them said that you have to kind of fail faster to reach success. So I, we thought, you know, we might as well start a lot of companies and just get the money thing out of the way. And we founded like 10 different companies in, a, I think, two two to three year period. Um, so this is the first lesson. Like if you're a master at a certain trade, if you're king or queen at, at whatever the industry you're working with, it doesn't mean that you know, you're going to be king or queen in all the industries. So the, the first thing that, you know, I, I recommend all the listeners to do is really do your homework in that area that you want to kind of invest in or to, uh, to pursue a career in. So I, we ended up start, you know, starting a telecom company. We had a hot dog chain from Denmark. We, we were doing human resources. We were, um, yeah, lots of different uh, advertising agency, outdoor events, lots of different stuff. And actually, until the 2008 crisis, guys, believe it or not, we were doing pretty well. We were, we were growing, we were taking, we were leveraging, we were growing, we were taking new loans to expand. And then the 2008 crisis, financial crash came uh, when all the big boys from New York <laughs> went bust. And it reflected, of course, in all of Europe as well. Uh, and that was when, you know, you know, anyone can build a big business when it's all expansion and growth and sunshine and rainbows. But when the dip comes and it will, uh, everything goes in cycles, right? That that's when you really you you really differentiate the pros from the amateurs. And we were amateurs at the time, and we got wiped out totally. So, um, and I would say that the the biggest mistake I did was um, at age 25, 26, being quite naive and thinking, you know, everything I touch turns into gold. I was. I was backing up some of the company's loans of my personal name. And that was, at least in Finland, I would not recommend that or in Europe, in most countries, because when you have personal loans, if your company goes bust, guess who pays them, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about the U.S. I, th- I understand. Same thing. Uh, same thing. Whenever, same whenever thing. you could avoid doing the personal thing, absolutely. Yeah. So that was, uh, it all, everything backfired on me. I had like $300,000 or something without interest on my shoulders, um, together with a couple of 
Um, well, me, my, my partner had 350K, I had 300. We had like a million between, I think, three or four fellows, uh, a little, little bit over a million uh, into pay off. And um, I, I remember in 2009, uh, vaguely, I was not sleeping very well at the time. I was very stressed out. I was taking sleeping pills um, to, 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 to get even a few hours of sleep because my house was about to be evicted. My car already was taken. And I remember sitting uh, at, a, at a petrol station, having a cup of coffee uh, with our last, you know, money with my one, one, my ex-partner who was CEO, of the, the biggest company, a telecom company, which went down. Um, and we were seriously thinking that, you know, um, should we jump ship or you know, like take, put cement shoes on and jump off the bridge. There was a big bridge just behind the corner. Um, and my, my, my partner was also going through a divorce at the same time. And I was also separated from my fiance. So it's like, it's funny, isn't it? When, when the doo-doo hits the fan, it tends to hit the fan in all, all <laughs> Thank the Thank you for saying doo-doo. Thank you. This is Rated G uh, podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just so polite here in, in the nor Northern Europe. <laughs> I love it. You guys are like Canadians. You're so nice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so basically, yeah. Um, but for you know something inside of me, it was probably thanks to the personal development books that I have been reading and, and and a lot of like positive seminars and uplifting people I had luckily found to, and surrounded myself, which is another golden nugget for you guys. If you're ever going through struggle, uh, or even if you're going through growth, make sure that the people you, like who are in your close inner circle, the five to seven friends that you hang out the most with, are you know serving your best interest. And especially when the times are tough, you really understand who your true friends are who really come and support you and don't and, and and don't tell you look i was telling you to be more careful look you should have listened to me um don't, then if they if you hear that kind of talk it means that you know they're, they're they're just trying to kind of keep you at their level so that maybe they're scared of growth or they're fright, frightened of something uh but they in in actually the opposite they should be like more cheering for you and saying hey the bigger the dip, the bigger the expansion. You know, we're giving as much heat as we can handle, and that's what kind of that was actually the record playing in my in my mind, even when I was you know in the morning crying in the shower, thinking is my life over, and you know, or, you know, I felt like I had no hope. I felt like I had no choices. I, I felt like I had no life. Also, I was I actually loved my fiance very very deeply, and she left me, and I didn't see it. You know, I was I was so focused and so uh, immersed in all of the adversity through the because because of bankruptcies I just I just was blinded to her I just I, I, I couldn't communicate with her in the same language and you know I was crying in the shower thinking you know what's the point anymore right um, but something an inner voice also then lit up and said you're given as much heat as you can handle the bigger the dip the bigger the growth will come from here and that's kind of the record that I started playing to myself every day, the affirmation. I, I started saying that, you know, behind this next corner is going to be an amazing mountain that, that is going to be all, all, you know, crazy, crazy growth. And I'm going to, you know, make, make my next million faster than I can ever uh, even imagine. Uh, so, and even my own father was telling me at the time, Nico, I think it's time to now, like, don't pay those loans off, just jump ship, you know come to Dubai, let's forget about all of, all of these loans that you have there. Um, and many of my partners decided that path. They just let everything go and, you know, lost their credit to the banks and couldn't do business in their own name for many, many years. And it's, it's you, you have to suffer. Uh, I was calling collectors, pleading, crying, please don't take my house, give me two more weeks. And I, was, I started to deal and wheel and hustle and make 1,000 bucks from there and 2,000 from there. And, and then I was actually introduced again to the path where I was pretty good at before I started, you know, messing about with other investments. So I started, I was offered a, uh, an opportunity to launch a new direct sales company in Finland. Um, I was burned out. I was tired, but so I got some kind of energy, some kind of uh, fire inside of me. And, um, and I decided to give it a go. And uh, not just give it a go, but actually give it all in. Uh, I thought this is my opportunity. This is this is what I need. You know, this came for a reason. This is this is what will pay everything off and will help my life transform 180 degrees. Um, and yeah, I just went ham on it. I just went belly, you know, full intense focus on one course. And I decided that for once in my life, you know, my 
biggest weakness has always been impatience. Uh, I want things to happen right away. Um, and if they don't, I get really frustrated. I'm, I get bored and tired very easily. I mean, tired of doing the same things. But now I decided I'm going to focus for at least 1,000 days for two years, seven months with all full intensity. And, and um, if it doesn't help work, then I'll jump ship. <laughs> but it, luckily it did. So uh, I was able to, with the, with, the re, with the recent direct sales company or leverage sales company, however you want to call it, create a lot of leverage and actually made over a million dollars in profit in my first five years and had a, was blessed to pay everything off with interest, kept my credit clean all through the round. Uh, it was my house wasn't evicted and luckily we even went, started going to ter therapy with my fiance because I, I didn't want to let the relationship go without solving the knots because if you do that, the next relationship, you start most likely those knots are still going to be there and it's just going to be a vicious circle. So we, we actually started going to therapy and counseling together for six months. We found a really good shrink or a, maybe not a very traditional shrink, but let's say more spiritual. Um, and she helped us to learn to, 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 to communicate in the right love language. Uh, and today I'm grateful and blessed to say that with that same lady who we separated for six months, we actually live our living our, best life today with two beautiful boys and uh, both of us are working from home building online business and like you said David we get to travel the world world now as digital nomads um, and also help inspire people transform their future through thanks to our story as well so that's that is it in, in, a, in a nutshell I would say <laughs> I love it that is uh, that you, you got a book you got a book in you Miko I'm telling you that is super incredible um, what a what a story and you know in the fact that you just persevered, not only just persevered, I mean, you know, listen, you were, you were half joking, maybe half not about like jumping off the bridge with uh, cement shoes. Right. And, mm -hmm. and the pressure is great. I mean, you know, the, I mean, there, you know, unfortunately there, there are a lot of entrepreneurs uh, that they look like things are going okay. Um, but they're very, very depressed. They're uh, sometimes they're suicidal, right? And it's, I mean, it's real stuff. It's scary stuff. And especially when things go wrong. Um, and, you know, so not only did you find a way to persevere and get through the storm, uh, you didn't jump ship. You didn't go back to Dubai and, you know, cut your losses from Finland. I mean, you stood into the wind and you fought back, right? And, uh, and you, you, with honor, right? Paid off your debt, got back on track and you could, you know, I'm sure there were some people very angry with you and making you feel like you were worthless, but now you could hold your head up high because you, you did the right thing, right? And it was tough. And, you know, Winston Churchill has a quote, when you're walking through hell, keep walking, right? Keep walking. Yep. And, uh, you know, you, you had mentioned that God can't, doesn't, doesn't give you what you can't handle. And I just found a great quote the other day I put on my Facebook page in LinkedIn that if God brought you to it, he can get you through it. Right. And, uh, right. And, and, uh, and, you know, listen, I know when you were going through that experience, it was complete hell, but wow, did it, did it shape you and form you and evolve you into the next version of Miko, right. And you're stronger, better, faster, and you're able to help people now too. Right. So I don't know if you would go through it all again, if you had the choice, but you did and you're making the best of it and you learn from it. Right. And you're, you're stronger. You're a stronger man because of it. And you don't take things for granted. You know, you said your, uh, your doo-doo, uh, you, you thought your doo-doo didn't stink. Well, <laughs> it did for a while, right? And, and you, you, you know, and you got it back on track and it doesn't stink right now. But you're fully aware in, in, in uh, the humility that you learn through the process. You know full well that your doo-doo can stink again, right? And I'm sure that's always on your mind. And so you're grateful and blessed and you, you continue to, to keep the lessons of your past, I'm sure, top of mind as you grow, you know, uh, Miko uh, 2.0. And, uh, and on top of all that, I'm so thrilled that you ended up uh, being able to stay with your fiance and she became your wife. What a, what a great, great extra bonus part of the whole, of the whole journey. Yes, that, that was a fa fantastic bonus part. And uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like I, like I mentioned in the beginning of, of, of the in interview that, um, Actually, though, that situation was my biggest blessing because thanks to what happened, we managed to, yeah, I, I, it really shaped us, uh, uh, myself, to, to, to be, you know, take many, many steps further as a better version. And, 
yeah, it, it, it taught focus, it taught humbleness, it taught, um, you know, uh, perseverance and consistency. Like the old saying goes that persistency will get you what you want and consistency will actually get you to keep it. Um, yeah. Before that time, I was, I was persistent, but I wasn't consistent. I was, you know, juggling too many things. And what I'm also super ex- excited to share and, and, and grateful about is that the whole gang of guys who we, who we had over a million dollars uh, collectively to pay off, today, all of us are actually um, millionaires or very close to being millionaires. Um, so so there, there's, some, there's magic in um, a mastermind group. There's magic in having a five, you know, five, seven people who are in that inner circle who, you, who we keep motivating, motivating each other and lifting each other. And, you know, when my fiance left me and I couldn't stay at the house because it had too many negative emotions and energy, I was staying at one of my partners living at his sofa, who's now one of uh, the millionaires that, who was also almost losing the, his house. And, you know, my, my friend who was more depressed than me because his, his wife, I mean, they went through divorce. They didn't get back together. He had also three kids to feed. Uh, and, um, you know, his monthly expenses were even a little bit more than mine. But he also just exited from his, um, his startup and uh, is basically, you know, on, on his way of becoming a, mu- a multimillionaire. Uh, thanks to that, because he just kept, kept going. And none of us stayed in the fire, even though we didn't, some of us didn't pay everything off at once. We, some of us, I, I, I was paying everything. My partners were kind of said, screw it for now and let's do it later once we have the, the funds. And they did, they all did. So that's amazing. Like, so they, uh, can, so so they, all, can, they all can hold their head up high. They, they can all hold their head, head up high and a uh, very, very powerful, like an uh, important message to, to, to the listeners is that, you know, the people that we should hang out with is, are people like David who are like, you know, in, in te- areas that you want to grow in and be successful, like at least 10 times further than you or at least are challenging each other to, to always become a little bit better and not dragging us down to the kind of norm because, you know, our mind gets tricky. If we don't fill it with positive things every day, if we don't work on our minds, if we don't work on meditation and connecting to, to, to the source and be grateful every day of, you know, all, all, all the areas like family and friends and our business and our health, you know, our, our mind will start growing weeds before you can say, you know, jump up. So it's like, we, it's consistent. We personal growth, hanging out with the right people. It's a, it's a consistent effort, in parallel to also obviously working on your career and, and you're growing your business. So it it all has to happen together, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, you as Earl Nightingale used to say, you you become what you think about most of the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So uh, before we go, uh, Miko, uh, what are you doing today to help people? Yes. So, so that's, that's a great question. So, so, so basically I'm, I'm actually a serial entrepreneur, uh, an investor. So uh, now that I have finally sorted my, my finances out, I, I love helping fellow entrepreneurs if they have, you know, great, great ideas. Um, and not, not just throw in some money, but I've also mm-hmm. my uh, speciality or where I, where I love uh, focusing on is kind of helping put together a, a dream, maybe, um, of, of uh, key, key people if, if we see that there's a, there's a great idea and potential and also help with the first, first uh, round or seed round. Um, and, and basically, I'm, I'm not really operational, but I'm, I'm, I'm advisor in several startups. Uh, a few of them have also you know, transformed into growth companies. But my passion is, is still in, in, in direct sales, uh, uh, leverage sales, network marketing, however you want to call it. Uh, I see that, you know, especially... For, for average people who maybe don't have that, you know, uh, super, um, uh, you know, inheritance or master's degree or like haven't found really what is their, what, you know, jack of the trade or the, what, what are they really excelling in? It's, it's a great way to make a, a part-time income where you can then, you know, grow your pension or start doing some real estate investments or even have create a complete new career out of it. So, I love helping people, um, yeah, transform their, their, their wealth. And also I think health is our number one wealth. So we're, we're actually dealing with test-based health products. So kind of helping people in, in, in many areas through, through this concept global, in, in a global scale. 
from Saaremaa Island or from, from wherever, basically working it on my, on my laptop. So that's kind of my passion, uh, but also investing is another um, second passion of mine. Yeah, isn't that great? Isn't that great that, you know, uh, not, not too long ago, you had no money, you were in the shower crying, and now you have the opportunity to, to invest and help uh, with other people and companies. I mean, what a, what a great, great, incredible, uh, you know, riches to rags to riches again type of story. You know, so congratulations. I'm, I'm really, really glad I met you. Uh, I want to continue our friendship and our conversations. And I, I feel like there's some things that we can be doing together because uh, you and I are kindred spirits. I have my, you know, my own versions, my own stories of crash and almost burned and got back up again. And, uh, you know, what happens is to us entrepreneurs is the joke is we become unemployable, right? Like we need to find another way to make a living uh, for ourselves with the business because, you know, we can't go work for another company now. Like, are you going to have a boss at this stage in your life? You know, I, I'm not, right? I hope not. Jeez. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since 1995. So, uh, so we, 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 need to, we need to find a way to get back up, roll up our sleeves and, and make it happen. So, Miko, thank you so much for sharing your story. Completely appreciate it. Hey, if our uh, Avanti family wants to learn more about you and, and get in touch with you, what are the best ways to, to make that happen? Yes, th th thank you once again, David. Um, I would say that I'm, 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 I'm pretty active on social media. So, Facebook, if you just put, put my name there or, um, or Instagram or LinkedIn, I'm active in all. All, all of those social media platforms. Also, mikojara.com is, is one way to contact me, my, my page. Right, we'll have that in the show notes. Uh, but if you want it right now and you're driving, it's M-I-K-K-O, Miko Jara, J-A, let me get my readers on here, two R's, R-R-A-H, mikojara.com. Miko, again, so great to meet you. Thank you so much. I wish you continued massive success. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm so blessed and grateful to be with you on the show today and keep, 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 keep on doing all the greatness and thank you for everything you do, David. Absolutely. Come, come, come visit me in New York, will you? Uh, I'll, let's make it happen. Make uh, that, it happen. Will, I love it. I love it. You know where we're coming there. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Avanti family, for listening and or watching. Always honored that you're making time for me and the, uh, the Avanti content that we're producing for you. I hope that you, uh, Continue to learn more with us. Go to AvantiEntrepreneur.com. We have this podcast, recording, show notes, hundreds more, tons of other great services that we can help you with uh, at AvantiEntrepreneur.com. Thanks again. Make it a great day and stay awesome. Peace.